Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is Tri-Cities Community Television. I'd just like to begin um, with a land acknowledgement um, and to say that we're on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of Coquitlam First Nation. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to care for the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. So this afternoon, we're joined by Ernie Cardinal, um, who is here with us from Spirit of the Children. And I'd just like to thank you, Ernie, for joining mm -hmm. us today. Oh, well, well, thank you. And as that word I taught you, Dineshkamun, I'm very grateful to be here today. Well, we're very grateful mm -hmm. to have you, so Nanashkamun to you as well. It was a, a word that I learned recently mm -hmm. from you. Yes. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, Spirit of the Children and, and um, what the society is and oh, yes. where you operate from. Absolutely. And believe me, because our organization has so many facets, so many amazing programs, this could be a three, four part series because I am so grateful about uh, being part of this amazing Indigenous organization. Now, it started back around uh, 2006. And it's very interesting because I remember actually being there, not as an employee, but actually a community community new member. And I remember walking into the halls, going to the Round Rotunda in um, uh, downtown New Westminster, where we still are located, our head office. And I remember just like it just touching me going, mm -hmm. this seems like a special place. So of course, many moons later, I was actually offered a position there as a youth program manager. And um, uh, for a couple of years, I ran this very successful program out of Port Coquitlam. Uh, our little youth hub, a satellite office mm -hmm. outside of um, uh, Kingsway, right? Just mm -hmm. a few blocks away from here. And um, the pandemic hit. Right. So of course, as we all know, there were so many different things happening that mm -hmm. our, pro, uh, our youth hub got shut down because of course, how can you run a program if we're in lockdown? So it took a little shuffling around and I was hired back again as the Indigenous Cultural Liaison advisor, a title that I still like to hold. I won't let go of it because I believe in it, right? So I'm able to go out to the community and meet wonderful people like yourself to actually uh, tell about these programs, which start from uh, prenatal, so right from zero, all the way to our elders. So over a hundred. And believe me, some of these elders, they better be with us until they're in their hundreds because uh -uh. they're just such amazing knowledge they're keepers. Treasures. They are yes. treasures, yes. Yeah. So uh, we can start out with, you know, the, the prenatal infant massage, uh, our Hulu program, which is in New Westminster and here here in Poco at our youth hub on Shaughnessy Street at Shaughnessy Mall. Can you tell us what that is? Oh yeah, we actually started about two years ago. Uh, we have the uh, rental space on the second floor mm -hmm. of the Shaughnessy Mall that's right next to, is it Aunt uh, uh, the Lee Square, I believe it's called? Um, yes, so yes. I think you're very close to Lee Square. Uh, absolutely, yes. <laughs> right next door. All I know is there is a Dairy Queen, which we go to a lot, right. <laughs> and there's the A&W right next to us. Yes, and we're on the second floor. We are open Monday to Friday, and uh, out of that pro, uh, a satellite office, that's the one that our youth program runs out of. So we offer programming from uh, 4.30 to 7, Monday to Friday, and we have one-to-one -one services and youth outreach in the afternoons. But uh, I am so lucky that our ECD program from New Westminster has now partnered with us and they run programs in the morning on, I believe, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And we're hoping for more if we get more people coming in uh, to uh, do a lot of uh, play and development and cultural uh, learning. And I, I got to admit, when I walk in to their room bef before they break down all of their little toys and stuff, it is the most warm and inviting space you can ever imagine. These programs are free. And I really want to specify that, that we offer this one uh, free for all, all of uh, uh, the Indigenous people or people that would like to learn about Indigenous culture. The second thing is uh, we are Indigenous culture, but we offer um, 
a lot of programs, some are specific for Indigenous families, I will put that out there, but a lot of them are open for anyone that would like to be a part of uh, the Truth and Reconciliation and learn about, you know, the Indigenous issues and be a positive ally, and we need them. So that is really interesting. So you're saying that anybody can come to yes. some of these yes. and learn about truth and reconciliation Absolutely. and to be involved in that. Um, mm -hmm. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about some of the things that you might do um, to promote some meaningful truth and reconciliation, like some things that, um, you know, that we can all kind of be involved in and, and participate in? I would love that, Nancy. And you know, uh, myself, I am a MC, so I do a lot of the uh, um, uh, MCing for all of our gatherings, which I hope I can share mm -hmm. uh, and try to, you know, get that buzzword out there so we right. can get the people off the couch and come and see us. White, brown, red, yellow. Don't know about those purple and blue people, because oh. if they're that color, maybe they should be going to a hospital. <laughs> they might right? need to you know? go somewhere else. <laughs> you know, they might have something stuck in their throat and you know, turn different color. But you know what I mean, right? Like, uh, you know, we, we want as many people to be uh, aware of uh, the indigenous issues right. uh, and to be hopefully with us so that we can walk together in a good way. Now, um, but... I always like to kind of keep it light because I am a youth program manager and, you know, I, I'm one of the first ones with a, a smile on my face and a mm -hmm. nice belly laugh. But <laughs> uh, a lot of our stuff, it has to be hard truths, Nancy. Yes, yeah. And so one of them, for instance, when uh, two years ago, when the uh, Kamloops uh, graves were found, or those little innocent little babies, right. uh, something we all knew in our, you know, because a lot of us, it was always whisper to us right. and we tried to tell people about this but no one would really believe us but when the hard evidence came out and they brought out those bones uh, we were the first people to uh, the, the first community uh, to actually have a ceremony and uh, that ceremony we do every year at Hyde Park in New Westminster and we have uh, all these beautiful teddy bears for every child that was discovered that day so we go out there we smudge we share our medicine and uh, we sing we pray we cry right, right? and uh, we actually never forget those those uh, poor children you know our, our ancestors yes uh, so that's one of them and that's something we do every year now and of course uh, with the new holiday of September 30th um, we actually have an amazing truth and reconciliation day and we get a lot of people from Port Port Coquitlam and Coquitlam that come all the way to New Westminster to be a sea of orange. Oh. Now we had over a thousand people to come oh. to our ceremony. So I hope that everyone out there uh, remembers that and puts it in there to come to Spirit of the Children's event. It's open for everyone and we'll even feed you. Our thing about September 30th is we're acknowledging those children that didn't have an opportunity to have a fun childhood yeah. of laughter and love, something me and you might have taken for granted, right? These children were denied that. So on September 30th, what we do is not only do we have a pipe ceremony to connect us all together, but we also give a toy to every child that comes there to remind them that, you know, have fun, have a childhood, laugh, right? And right. there's different books and uh, activities and food so that children are aware that in the spirit of those mm -hmm. children that didn't have that opportunity, they can actually celebrate for them. So Ernie, what we will do is I think we need to talk again when yes. we get closer to mm -hmm. um, September and have put a reminder out to invite people mm -hmm. and to keep it on people's minds because yes. we, um, we, you know, these discoveries happen and they're devastating and then it seems to, you know, people just kind of, it moves on and then we find more and we mm -hmm. know they're out there. So we do it need is. to keep awareness up and I think that if we can talk again, I hope you'll come back and talk again about that and we'll um, make sure that it stays on people's minds. Um, 
can I, you know, I just, I have a confession to make. Uh -huh. When I asked you if you would be willing to do an interview yes. with us, I looked you up on the internet and mm -hmm. I found a video of you doing a craft, a children's oh, craft, yes. a medicine wheel. And I thought, well, I'm just going to watch a couple minutes of this and get to know Ernie a little bit better. Yep. And my confession is I watched the whole thing. It was half oh. an hour. Uh, you talked a little bit about the crows up in the tree and how they were all huddled together yes. and looking very miserable, holding on to their feathers, I think you said. Yep. And uh, you said, that's just how I feel. I feel miserable. It's cold out here. And then you looked up and you saw an eagle and you talked about um, the eagle being flying so high and not looking miserable. And you said, I could be like the eagle. And, and so you had all these stories and lessons sort of woven right through when you were doing the craft. And I thought that you're just like a very engaging and skilled storyteller. It just, those are lessons that I would want my own daughter to hear in the way that you told them because they were non-judgmental, non-confrontational. They were just lessons. I, and I was wondering, do you use storytelling in some of the programs that you run? Oh, yes. But first of all, thank you for that. That was like so touching, you know, because as a storyteller, uh, I've been telling stories to, to children and youth, to families for years and years now. Um, and uh, something that is I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. because uh, in our culture, storytelling is considered word medicine. So to hear Hear a soothing story is isn't just a lesson of morality or how we uh, teach our ones to, to 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 be human, but it also soothes our soul, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that day was a beautiful day because. I'm very blessed that I'm connected with uh, the City of New Westminster's uh, Heritage and Museum. And one of my good friends, Rob McCulloch, who told me I better give him a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, well, uh, but uh, he actually is the one that has been really promoting Spirit of the Children to do these stories online. So if you oh, did okay. Google Ernie Cardinal uh, in the uh, uh, a bunch of videos that Rob has made for me, where I'm actually promoting Aboriginal culture, but in a storytelling way. Right. So Spirit of the Children is able to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, get that message out that, yes, we are uh, here and we are open to educate everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, just a few weeks ago, I went to Riverside and that right. was wonderful. The school. Yes, yes. And these high school kids are the most um, uh, involved and they were so respectful, right? Because I know myself, you know, a couple of old guys come and start telling stories while you want to rip out your phone and start checking out TikTok, but no, they listened, they were so happy and respectful mm -hmm. for us to be there. So I was able to bring in our traditional medicines, right. our tobacco, our sage, you know, the, the basics, but also I was able to share like our bear root and our uh, uh, our uh, uh, funguses and these mm. children well, not children, young adults. They were able to smell it. They were able to, to uh, 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 feel it. It was so nice, especially, you know, coming out of a pandemic where right. we're all like, stay, stay away. Six so, feet back, yes. you know, so it's all wrapped with the stories, right? right? And I usually have to focus on my own stories to get that message apart because then I feel it from my heart. Uh, for instance, we talked about uh, the the truth and reconciliation. Yes. Well, a year ago, I went to uh, this one school in New Westminster, New West Secondary, mm -hmm. and I did the Moosehide sp uh, uh, speech for them. So for a half an hour, I talked from my heart about you know, what uh, is affecting us. Mm -hmm. And at that time, just like about two weeks before, they discovered 93 mm -hmm. uh, graves uh, at uh, the uh, Drift Pile Indian School. And that's where my parents went to school. So those bodies could have been my cousins, could have been my uncles, right? It's so when we tell these stories, it's not just a news story, it's our it's a life. It's very personal. Yes, exactly. So yes. if we can be earnest about that and we can tell our narrative so that everyone can understand, mm -hmm. 
Right. And that's what we're hoping for. And that's why we have our gathering feast, which is happening uh, next Thursday. And, and uh, that's a time for us to get together, to sing, to celebrate and share mm -hmm. stories. Uh, we also have a welcoming home ceremony in three weeks. And uh, this gives an opportunity for our children that might have been taken away from uh, their families for a little bit so they can find their 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 balance and once right. that child comes back there should be a ceremony a celebration or our new sacred gifts that are born right, right. so it, it's a time for us to get together to sing to celebrate and honor these beautiful sacred gifts so those are just literally nancy just one or two of our um uh, ceremonies we're having just in the month of uh, March oh. and I haven't even started talking <laughs> about our youth program where we have free spring break camps mm -hmm. where we take them out on outings we feed them we we give them bus tickets to get home everything's all inclusive because we don't want a child to miss out you know because let's be honest, be, you know, a lot of families after they pay high rents and high cost of inflation, they can't afford to send a child to day camp anymore. So we are going to be there because that's what a community should do. Step up and show that we are connected. Right. And that's what spirit does. That's if I only had a few seconds, which I believe we do. <laughs> that's what I would say is we are here to be part of the family. Right. And it doesn't matter if you are indigenous or you are a, a first year uh, uh, immigrant. Oh, we love that because right. we can break those uh, myths. Right? right. You know, some of them still think we live in teepees and in igloos exactly. and, you know, I'm out chasing down a buffalo. Oh. Man, the only hunting I do now is at Safeway for a deal. <laughs> for a good deal. Right? For a good deal. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, you know, it's the whole point of getting uh, uh, people to realize that, yes, we are unique. Mm -hmm. We are special, but we're not segregated. We're we're not isolated. Right. Our door to our teepee is always open. Oh. Come on in. No. Uh, I, that it's been wonderful talking to you, Ernie, and I just, you know, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, some of some of the conversations I think will be difficult. Yes. Um, yes. And I think you know you've brought some of that acknowledgement here today, mm -hmm. and understanding that you know the first thing we need to do is we need to acknowledge where we are, and then we can start working together, um, going down that right path, yes. and you know. All the things that you do, um, all I can say is Nanash Kamun for uh, everything. And um, I do hope that you'll come back and join us again soon. I definitely want to because uh, it feels like we're just hitting the top of the iceberg because there's so many amazing things that I have. Uh, the um, uh, I am blessed that I have all these amazing co-workers mm -hmm. that every one of them brings so much to the table. And we have such a positive positive leadership team at Spirit. Ruth Weller is uh, a total mother for all of us. Mm -hmm. And she's constantly pushing us forward to, you know, find that family, you know, find that uh, event that are going to bring more people in. So with this team of ours, I hope that that will be an open invitation so that everyone can become part of Spirit of the Children. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Ernie. Yeah. Um, thank you for watching. This is Tri-Cities TV. We've been speaking with Ernie Cardinal, and we hope that we will be speaking with him again soon. Thanks for watching.